Isn't it great to be in the house of God this morning? Amen. It's a great group out there. Everybody's looking, smiling, and happy, and that's good. It's good to see. Uh, just keep that going when we hear God's Word, and, and let's take it out into the community and share it the best we can uh, during the coming week. Uh, we're celebrating Memorial Day. Uh, this weekend and our pastor as you can tell is is out today with his family uh, so let's pray for them to uh, have safe trips enjoy the family uh, together to have some uh, rest and relaxation Memorial Day weekend you know I see several fellow veterans out in the in the congregation today you know some all, all of us that served gave some, but some gave it all. And this weekend is where we need to be thinking about these guys and girls giving thanks to them for the ultimate sacrifice that they gave serving us so that we could have freedom to come in on a day like today and celebrate and worship God freely and openly. We, uh, we ought to also remember uh, the, the, and pray for the families in Uvalde, Texas as, as they're struggling. We can only think we can imagine what they're going through today. But we need to, uh, we need to pray for them. We also have our own prayer list here in, in the church. Uh, and I don't have a lot, due to my circumstances, I don't have a lot of updates, but uh, I'm aware that uh, Jackie Skipper did get home and she's doing a little better, but Andy and Beverly and the, and the rest are still sick. Uh, and, uh, and, and so we need to, to keep them in our prayers. Also, uh, Wayne and Janine, uh, are not here we need to keep them in our prayers because Bo is still in the hospital in intensive care and uh, I don't know the the, the details uh, of, of any of that but uh, but God does and we can we can turn to him uh, I personally appreciate all the prayers the text the cards food everything that you guys have done for Kathy and I uh, she uh, she did not have a good night last night nor this morning, so I ask you to pray for her. Uh, announcements, next Sunday, uh, Brotherhood Breakfast, 7 o'clock. Uh, the, the crew is uh, ready to uh, cook breakfast, and uh, I think this will be the first one in several months that, uh, that you've had. So, uh, guys... And any ladies that want to get up and come early, they, they don't mind you coming either. Uh, 7 o'clock next Sunday morning. Uh, in Brother Herbert's absence this morning, uh, we have uh, Brother Mike Phillips with us again. Uh, he's preached uh, several times, and I, I actually got to listen to one of them back in January in person, but the ones in December I had to watch on online. Uh, very great messages, a, a great man of God. He was a first responder. He served 40 years with the fire department in uh, Greenville. And about 21 of those years, he served as the fire chief. And about 13 to 15 years, he has pastored or been associate pastor uh, of a church. And with Brother Mike, we're going after the song service, we'll turn the service over to you, let you share with us what God's put on your heart to share with us this morning. And I pray that we will be listening with open ears and open hearts to hear what God has to say through you. And then if you would, you can close the service as you see fit at the, at the end. I think that, was there anything else announcement-wise? You got your bulletin, and there'll be a shower this coming Saturday, so you got that in in, in the bulletin. Uh, didn't didn't mention that. But anyway, it's great to see y'all this morning. You just don't know how it feels for me to be standing up here. A little nervous. It's been a while since I've been up here, so uh, a little a little nervous and excited, and don't want to leave anything out. Uh, but uh, it, it sure is great to see uh, these smiling faces that have been praying for Kathy and I. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. 
Father, we just humbly pause before you, giving you thanks for this day. Father, giving you thanks for all the blessings that you've shared with us. And Father, we will just open our eyes and minds and look around and see really how you have blessed us on a daily basis. Father, we just pray that each of us will keep you in the forefront of our, our eyes and in front of our mind and that our, our uh, process would be to, to spend time with you daily, but yet to share you with others that we come in contact with. Father, we ask you to uh, protect and guide and, and safely bring our pastor and his family back home after they've had some rest and relaxation that they so, so much deserve. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity that we can just come into your house freely and with just personally with choice. These people are here because they chose to be here. There's others out there that should be here, but God, they chose not to. And you know the reasons why. And Father, we just pray that, that we can be an influence on them and see that they get back. Get closer to you. Come and hear your word and make decisions. And Father, we just pray if there's anyone here today that hasn't made that decision to choose you as their personal Savior. Father, we just pray that today, today, this service, this time, will be the time for those decisions to be made. Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to be here. We thank you for Brother Mike being down to, to preach for us today and to deliver your word. And Father, we just pray that you will put on his heart the things that you really want us to hear and what we need to absorb from your word today. Father, we thank you for uh, the, the opportunity to, to serve you and to sing songs to you and to worship you through praise of music. And Father, we just pray for the ladies as they lead us this morning uh, in our song service. Father, we just give you the praise and honor and glory for everything that's done, said, and accomplished here this morning. And we thank you so much for sending Jesus to die on the cross so that we have that hope of eternal life with you through accepting him as our personal Savior. And it's in his precious name I pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good, morning. Good to be back with you today. It's uh, always a privilege to come. And I was excited when I talked to Brother Herbert a few weeks ago and he asked me if I would come back. And I told him certainly I would. I'd be glad to. I always enjoy coming. If you will, take your Bible this morning and turn with us over to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, and I want to thank this morning for a few moments on the subject of real peace. Let me tell you, I'm sure all of us here today could handle a little more peace, especially in the world we're living in today. Ephesians chapter 2, we'll begin reading with verse 13 through verse 18. It says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body, through the cross, thereby put into death the enmity or the ill will or the hatred. And he came and preached peace, you who were afar off, and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you this morning. We thank you for the reading of your word. I just ask, Lord, that you will bless it. Thank you for your presence here today. Lord, we just pray that you'll touch each of our hearts here today, that we may be focused on your will for our lives. And we thank you this morning for the peace that we have because of the blood of Jesus Christ. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Let me tell you, the world we're living in today, it seems like more and more people are searching for peace. But it also seems like that so many of those people today are not finding that peace that they need. And why is that? 
Well, it's been said that the world we're living in today will never be the dwelling place, place of peace until peace has found a home in the hearts of every man, woman, boy, and girl. And that real peace comes only from knowing Jesus Christ. And I know we all watch the news and we see what's going on out there today. We keep see about the wars and the rumors of wars and things that are taking place. Especially if we think about this Memorial Day uh, that we're celebrating here today and see everything that's out there going on in our world today, it kind of makes us a little nervous. We see the things that happened in the school shooting this past week. Children being slaughtered and shot down there in the classroom. And we wonder, how can these things be happening here in our country? And the list, the list just goes on and on and on. And people are searching for the peace that they need to make it through these times. Jesus told us in John 16, 33, he said, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I'm sure we all know who Ted Turner is. He was the founder of Turner Broadcasting System, CNN News, and the former owner of the Atlanta Brave, among other things that he had done. He was a rich man and a powerful man. But not only is Turner rich and powerful, but he also has openly ridiculed Jesus Christ and the Word of God. He proclaims that our society that we're living in today has no need for Christian teachings and Christian values. He sneers at the Ten Commandments as being something from a far more primitive day and time. A few years ago in Atlanta, he told a gathering of contributors on CNN's World Report that he wanted to see if anybody out there had a real vision for world peace that was in harmony with our environment. So he bankrolled a competition to find and to produce a book that would present a workable plan for world peace. He later reported out of 10,000 manuscripts that had been submitted, he did not find even one valid, credible writing that included a method of organized discussions of the facts and the principles involved with a reasonable conclusion being reached. And the fact is, he was absolutely right. And the tragedy of it all is that Ted Turner already had available to him the one book that speaks of real peace, that peace that passes all understanding, and Jesus Christ is the one who makes that peace available to each and every one of us today that are simply willing to accept it. Philippians 4, 7 says, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. In the Old Testament, Isaiah prophesies whenever he wrote in Isaiah 9, 6, he says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. See, Jesus Christ is that Prince of Peace. He is the one and the only source of real peace, and that's a promise from the Almighty God himself. Let me tell you, today, everybody is searching for peace. Peace, some kind of way, and they're looking everywhere for it. But everybody is looking for peace. I read a little story about a man that went to the doctor one day just complaining about a number of aches and pains. And I can kind of understand that. I'm sure some of us can. We get up in the morning, we go to bed with those aches and pains and get up with them, they're still there. They just might move around a little bit. But they're there. After the doctor examined this man, he told him, he said, I, I really can't find anything physically wrong with you. He said, but sometimes physical problems can be the result of worry and stress. He said, what you probably need to do is go find you a good counselor, sit down with him and tell him all your troubles, and he might be able to give you some advice to make you feel a little better. Well, the doctor went on to say, you know, just a few weeks ago, I had another gentleman that came in here and complained of problems a lot like the ones that you got. I said, I couldn't find anything wrong with him either. But I sat down and began to talk to him for a little while. And he finally come around and told me that he was just worried sick about a $5,000 debt that he owed and he just couldn't pay it. He says, we talked a little bit more and I was able to help that man. He said, well, Doc, how was you able to help him? 
He said, well, I, I sat down and I told him, I said, look, life is just too short for you to be worrying about a piece of paper that says you owe $5,000. He says, I suggested him, he take that piece of paper, tear it up, throw it in the trash, and quit worrying about it and get on with his life. So he did. And guess what? Now he's feeling great. The man said, I know he's feeling great. I was the one he owed the $5,000 to. <laughs> Let me tell you, there's no doubt that life is full of stress and strain. It's full of anxiety. Everywhere we turn, it's there. It seems like wherever we go, it's going to always show up. It's been said that the generation that we're living in today is the age of anxiety and worry is prevailing emotion of our day and time. And I think they hit it pretty close. Just stop and think about it. Wouldn't it be really nice to just sit down one day and say, I don't have anything at all to worry about today. Everything in my life is in order. Everything is under control. I like to read Max Licato books. I kind of like the way that he lays things out. <clears throat> and in one of his books entitled Anxious for Nothing, he tells this little story. He said, you know, we didn't select our birthplace and we didn't select our birthday. We didn't choose who our parents were going to be, and we didn't choose who our siblings were going to be. We don't determine the weather, and we don't determine the amount of salt that's in the sea. There are many things in life over which we have absolutely no choice. He said, but the greatest activity in life is well within our reach. He said, we can choose what we think about. Now think about that for a moment. We can choose what we think about. He said we can be the air traffic controller of our mental airport. Now focus on that a minute. We're the air traffic controller of our mental airport. We're the ones that occupy the control tower. We can direct the mental traffic of our world. Thoughts circle around above, coming and going. If one of those thoughts lands, it's because we give it permission to land. If it leaves, it's because we direct it to do so. We can select our thought pattern. And we're told in Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 3, it says, commit your work to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. So he goes on to say this. If you want to be happy tomorrow, then maybe you need to sow some seeds of happiness today. Well, how do we do that? So you might start by counting your blessings. Maybe memorize a Bible verse or two. Certainly pray. Sing some hymns. And spend some time encouraging other people. If you can't spend some time encouraging other people, maybe spend some time with encouraging people. But if you want to guarantee tomorrow's worries, tomorrow's misery, then what you need to do is wallow in a mental pit of self-pity or guilt or anxiety today. Assume the worst. Assume the worst is going to take place. Beat yourself up. Sit down and just rehearse your regrets over and over and over again. If you want to complain, find you another complainer to complain to. You can complain to each other. Our thoughts have consequences. Healing from anxiety requires healthy thinking. Your challenge is not your challenge. Here's what he means by that. Your challenge is not your challenge. Your challenge is the way you think about your challenge. Satan already knows that. The devil is always messing with our minds. Amen? He's always messing with our minds. He fills the sky around our mental airport with airplanes carrying nothing but fear and worry and anxiety. And he's doing the very best that he can to convince us to let them land and unload their stinking cargo in our mind. John chapter 10 verse 10 says the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Satan is a master of deceit, but he's not the master of our mind. We have a power 
that Satan cannot defeat. We have Almighty God Himself on our side. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 said, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So what we think about carries a lot of weight in our life. The Apostle Paul tells us that Jesus Christ is one of the only source of real peace between God and us. We can have peace with God only because of Jesus Christ. Verse 13 that we read this morning in Ephesians 2 says, But now in Christ Jesus you who were once far away have been brought near, how? To the blood of Christ. Notice the first two ver words in that verse. But now. But now. Two small words, but very powerful words. Jesus has now come into the world. There was a time when he was not, hadn't entered into the world yet. There was a time when men were divided and they were separated from God. They were also separated from each other. But now, Christ has come to bring all men to God and to each other. So the question we might ask today is this. How does Jesus bring us near to God? And the scripture makes it quite clear by the blood of Jesus Christ. Our God is holy. He's righteous. He's pure. And he created us in his own image. That means that he has given us the ability to live holy, righteous, and pure lives. But he's also given us the freedom to make a choice. We have a, that opportunity to choose. Each and every one of us here today that's old enough to know the difference between right and wrong has made that decision at some point in time to do what we knew was wrong. Amen. We've all done it. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us in Romans 3.23 for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In other words, we've all sinned against God, and not just once or twice, but we've done it repeatedly, over and over again. And think about it. We that were made in His holy image have just totally fouled it all up. We've taken that which is precious in His sight, and we've stained it with sin. We've turned our backs on Him. We've gone in our own direction, taken our own path. And as a result of that, there was a wall of disobedience that had been erected between us and God. But the good news is this. Our God still loves us. He took the initiative and he sent his only begotten son that through him, that wall, that barrier might be destroyed and we can be brought back to God. So the truth is this. We can have peace with God when and only when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Outside of that, we'll never know real peace. In fact, the Bible says that the only way back to God is through Jesus. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's no other Savior. There's no other way to God. We can never get there through our good works. We can never get there through our good, honest character. The one and only way we'll ever get there is through Jesus. Now that can be hard for some people in our society today to accept. Especially today when we're living in a world that accepts and embraces virtually anything and everything. It says that one religion is just as good as another religion. It says one way of life is just as good as another way of life. When we look at all the things that are happening in our world around us today, we need to really be able to embrace the truth. And that truth is simply this. There's only one way to the Father, and that's through His Son, Jesus Christ. Even if we are accused of being narrow-minded people, and sometimes we are. It seems that every time we, we cut on the TV and look at the news, there's always some Something on there makes you wish you never had turned it on to begin with. We see another state giving men right to marry men. Women the right to, to marry women. 
And sadly, they're lined up by the hundreds and the thousands everywhere to, to try to get married. More and more people are accepted today. That's just okay. That's the world we live in today. And in all that, someone needs to be able to stand up and tell the truth to the world that there is but one way to God, and that truth is found in His Word. Let me tell you, if God's Word says that it's wrong, it's wrong. If it says that it's right, it's right. God's Word has not changed, never will change. If you go to the doctor, and he runs some tests on you, and he tells you, you got diabetes, and he comes out with this little medicine bottle. He says, I got some good news for you. You got diabetes, but you take this insulin that I'm going to prescribe for you, and you can go about living a pretty much normal life. And you say to him, well, Doc, I just don't believe I want to take that insulin. I believe I'd just rather take me a couple of aspirin every day instead. How come I got to take that insulin? Doctors have tried to explain to you that the only, oh, this insulin is the only thing that's going to help you. You say to him, you've got to be the most narrow-minded doctor I've ever seen in my life. The truth is, the doctor's not being narrow-minded. He's just being honest with you. He's being compassionate with you because the only thing that's going to help your situation is that insulin. So he tells you the truth. Let me tell you, when churches really preach the truth today, the world may perceive us as just being narrow-minded people. But if millions and millions of people in this country today are going to believe a lie that comes straight from Satan himself, let me tell you, it's still a lie. It don't change. The Apostle Paul goes on to tell us that Jesus is the source of real peace among men. We can have peace with each other. We can live in harmony only because of Jesus Christ. See, Jesus brings us peace when he realizes, when we realize that he died for us, he offers us deliverance from the bondage of sin and death and a life of eternity in heaven with the Almighty God. Jesus also brings us a deeper sense of peace whenever we come to realize that he gives us power each and every day of our life to overcome the problems that we face in this world. Because of the blood of Jesus, we can now all approach God on level ground. A person not accepted by God because they're better, because they're wealthier, because they're healthier, because they're more intelligent, because they're more religious than anyone else. There's only one way to God. We're only acceptable because we acknowledge our unworthiness, and we acknowledge our desperate need to be saved by the blood of Jesus. Verse 14 in Corinthians 2 says, For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. See, that's talking about, that's a picture from the temple. The temple was surrounded by a series of different courts. And each court had a high wall separating it from the preceding court. As a person approached the temple, first they entered the outer court of the Gentiles. This is where the buying and the selling of, of animals in exchange for money for foreigners and those worshipers there took place. Then there was the court of the women. A Jewish woman was limited to this court unless she had come to make a sacrifice. The next court was the court of the Israelites. This is where the whole congregation gathered together on the great feast day where sacrifices were handed over there to the priest. Then the next court was the court of the priest. This court was there in the temple area where the temple itself stood. This area was considered to be sacred ground. It was acceptable, accessible only to the services of the priest. And finally, in the very heart of the temple stood the Holy of Holies, the most holy place where the very presence of God was to dwell. And only the high priest could enter the holy place, and he could only enter there once a year at the great Passover feast. So what do we have there? Petition after petition after petition after petition. All those petitions separated those people from the presence of God. 
But in the scripture that we read this morning, we see a picture of Jesus Christ breaking down all those barriers, breaking down all those petitions that separate the people from God. All people can now approach God equally through the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The barrier problem we face today, there's still some barriers out there, but they're man-made barriers. People are guilty of building all kinds of barriers, things like race and religion, wealth and appearance, health and ability, and the list just goes on and on. But Galatians chapter 3 verse 28 tells us this. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul said, Jesus is, is the source of real peace within each and every one of us. If we got real peace today, it comes only from Jesus Christ. We can be at peace with ourselves because Jesus himself is that Prince of Peace. Have you ever stopped to think about it? Whenever Jesus was crucified, he didn't leave a material inheritance to his disciples. All he had was a robe. But Jesus willed his followers something more valuable than gold. He willed us his peace. John 14, 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In closing the Composer Fanny Crosby writes these words. I'm sure words we're all familiar with probably have sung them a number of times. She said, A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock where rivers of pleasure I see. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. He taketh my burden away. He holdeth me up, and I shall not be moved. He giveth me strength as my day. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shallows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life with the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand. As our song leader and pianist come to lead us in a song of invitation this morning, if you're here today, do you know that Jesus that brings that peace? If you don't, we want to give you that opportunity this morning to get to know him. Maybe you're here today and you got something we can pray with you about this morning. If the Lord has spoken to you in some way, whatever it might be, we just invite you to be obedient to him today.